English for teachers. Lesson twelve, page number two sixty-seven. Comparison. Let me ask. Uh, a word ter oniki uchon kore comparison actually, but it will be comparison. The last one is sa, sa. comparison. Right. Comparison. And is ekto gamra porsil consumer consuming. It will be consuming. So a a ko ekto word. Zaman dero aru ekta chhe. Zaman dero. मीडियम प्रथम पार्ट बोल अपना जरा पढ़ें तक ए रखम दो जन मिले भाव प्रैक्टिस करते टक अबाउट एजुकेशन रक इन इज डुईंग एस एस सी वेर एज नाफिस इज डुईंग सो देखो कम्पेरिटिव सेंटेंसर मध्य चले आसल से शिखे फिलल ना लेट्स टक अबाउट इंगलिस नाफिस इज गुड एट इंगलिस बाट रक इन इज नट लेट्स टक अबाउट स्पोर्ट्स Rockin is good at sports while Nafis is not. And how about painting? Nafis is poor in sports but Rockin is not. Hobby. Nafis hobby. Nafis's hobby is gardening. You can ekta mojar dekhen Nafis is mane naf Nafis said. Eh? And hobbies mane hobby is. The first apostrophe hote er possessive Nafis is আর পরেরটার হবিজ এটা হচ্ছে হবি ইজ বেসিক্যালি নাফিসেস হবি ইজ গার্ডেনিং ওয়াইল রকিনস হবি ইজ কালেক্টিং স্ট্যাম্পস নিউজপেপার রকিন লাইকস টু রিড নিউজপেপার ওয়্যার এজ নাফিস ডাজ নট ইন্টারেস্ট নাফিস হ্যাজ ইন্টারেস্ট ইন কম্পিউটার ওয়াইল রকিনস ইন্টারেস্ট ইন অল ইজ ওনলি ইন সেল ফোনস এ কম্পিউটার Rockin uses computer only for playing games. On the other hand, Nafis uses computer to browse the internet. I think I I relate to Nafis. <laughs> Let's talk about pet. Nafis has a pet dog. But Rockin has no pet. Friends, Rockin has got many friends. Whereas Nafis has only a few friends. Siblings. Rockin is the only son of his parents. While Nafis has one brother named Najib. Family. Nafis lives in a joint family. Whereas Rakin lives in a nuclear family. Nuclear meaning small family. Now talent. Nafis is talented. But Rakin is dull. Study. Nafis likes to study. While Rakin likes to listen to music. Aim. Nafis's aim is to be a doctor. On the other hand, Rakin wants to be a businessman. House. Rakin lives in an apartment. Where whereas Rakin lives in Narshingdi. In a house. Wait, sorry, sorry. Whereas Nafis lives in a house. Location. Nafis lives in Dhaka. Whereas Rakin lives in Narshingdi. Parents. Rakin's father is a police officer. On the other hand, Nafis's father is a businessman. Storybooks. Nafis likes to read storybooks. While Rakin likes to read novels. Yeah, that's fine. We are done. Excellent. Yeah. So now you know how to differentiate between two people. Let me now let's uh, compare between a rich man and a poor man. Sure, let's go ahead. Okay, let's talk about occupation. Mr. Hassan is a rich businessman. Whereas Mr. Rafiq is a poor farmer. Wealth. Mr. Hassan is very wealthy. While Mr. Rafiq is very needy. A little correction. This word wealthy most people of our country Bangladesh they say wealthy. And similarly health to healthy not healthy. So there is a rhyme we learned in our childhood and that is uh, early to bed and early to rise. 
makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. Right. It will be makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. There is a reason behind that. What is the last sound of the word health? Is huh. th. So when you add y gives it sound, why do you make it th? So health to healthy. Wealth, the last sound is th. And e added at the end, it will be wealthy and healthy. Okay. Wealth. Mr. Hassan is very wealthy. While Mr. Rafik is very needy. Food. Mr. Hassan takes rich food. On the other hand, Rafik takes very simple meal. Location. Mr. Hassan lives in the city. Whereas Mr. Rafik lives in a village. House. Mr. Rafik lives in a small hut. While Mr. Hassan lives in a mansion. Hmm. Mr. Rafik, don't talk about family. Mr. Rafik has a large family. But Mr. Hassan has a small family. Education. Mr. Hassan is an educated person. While Mr. Rafik is an illiterate one. Mm. Likes. Mr. Hassan likes to visit foreign country. Whereas Mr. Rafik likes to visit city. Party. Mr. Hassan enjoys eating food out. Whereas Mr. Rafik enjoys family party. Friend. Mr. Rafik has many friends in the village. While Mr. Hassan has none. Leisure. Mr. Hassan has no time for leisure. But Mr. Rafik has leisure time to enjoy. Hard working. Mr. Hassan is a hard working person. But Mr. Rafik is a laid back person. Mm -hmm. Car. Mr. Hassan owns a brand new car. While Mr. Rafik has a brand new bicycle. Yeah, it's bicycle. Most people pronounce it as bicycle. Cycle, yeah. Savings. Mr. Hassan has a huge savings. While Mr. Rafik has no saving. Hobby. Mr. Hassan's hobby is collecting coins and currency notes of different countries. Whereas Mr. Rafik's hobby is collecting pens. Hmm. Games. Mr. Hassan likes to play golf. While Mr. Rafik likes to play kabaddi. Interest. Mr. Rafik's interest in farming. On the other hand, Mr. Hassan's interest is in different sorts of business. The last one is clothing. Mr. Rafik wears a very simple costume. While Mr. Hassan wears expensive costume. Hmm. They are fine, right? It's very nice. And very intriguing, sir. It is, it is. Now, the last part of this comparison, don't they differ? Aisha likes to read books. Whereas her sister, Nusaiba, does not. Rakib likes to play games. While Rajib does not. Noreen likes to watch TV. While Mita likes to listen to music. Shumi likes to eat fast food. While Seema likes to have traditional food. Ivan likes to... Ivan likes football. Whereas Ashraf likes cricket. And Rafik likes to dance. While Eva likes to sing. Nusrat likes to paint. Whereas Pia does not. Afra likes to eat Thai food. On the other hand, Nusrat likes Chinese food. Here I pronounce the word Thai food. That's the right pronunciation actually. It's not Thai food. It's Thai in English. Right, sir. Many people pronounce it as Thai food, right? Yeah. Just like your and Thai. The pronunciation of the country is Thailand. It's Thailand. Thailand. Like Thomas Alvarez and not Thomas. River Thames instead of River Thames. Like this. Okay. Shima is a housewife. While Mita is a working lady. Mugdha is a naughty boy. Whereas Tosif is a gentle one. Mm. This way, if you, this is called contextual grammar. You didn't learn any rule, but you practice many sentences from the context and you mastered it. That's it. I think you understood the comparisons very nicely and you have got a strong foundation about it. Lamia, the, the pronunciation standard of Bangladeshi learners of English is not really standard. Why is it so? What is your point of view? I think because of lack of massive input and lack of common sense, sir. Mm. And another thing in terms of pronunciation, 
and listening. The students of our country, they don't listen. Yeah, that relates to input skill. And uh, they try to listen to only the teachers from Bangladesh, and that creates a lot of problems. If they listen to native standard English, or close to native standard English, that will help them a lot. In this lesson today, we are going to show you how to read text in chunks. And there are some slash marks here. You'll see one single slash, four word one slash, and there are some double slash marks. The single slash, it means you have to give pause but little. And when you find a double slash mark, it means there is a little big pause. So you cannot and you should not pronounce words word by word, like a reading style in the beginning. A long, long time ago, there was nothing but a great empty space. This is reading word by word. This is never good. You have to read in chunks. How to do that? Let me show you how to do that. Reading a style in the beginning. A long, long time ago, there was nothing but a great empty space. There were no earth and no sky. There were no sun and no moon. There was no light anywhere. Everything was covered with darkness. The merciful Allah thought of making the world. He said, be, and the world was made. Allah wanted the world to be beautiful. He spread the earth like a carpet. Then he put mountains on it to hold it down. Above the earth he made the sky. In the sky he put two lights, the sun and the moon. And he told the sun to shine in the day and the moon to shine at night. Then Allah put stars in the night sky and told them to shine brightly to help travelers find their way at night. There are many stars in the sky, yet each one is different. Some are small and some are very big. Some twinkle gently and some burn brightly. They are like road signs that guide the travelers to the right place. Up to that, Allah divided the dry land from the seas. He covered the land with greenery, big trees, small bushes and colorful flowers. He told the rain to water the plants so that they might grow. Up to that, he made all kinds of animals, camels, horses, sheep and elephants. Then he made all kinds of birds, high-flying eagles, beautiful peacocks and sweetly singing nightingales. And he filled the seas with fish and other creatures. The world was beautiful. The earth was green. The sky was blue. And the seas were green and blue. There were many different animals on earth. Many different birds in the sky. And many different fish in the seas. Yet Allah wanted the world to be even more beautiful. Allah made the angels. The angels obey Allah in everything. They are his messengers. They carry his commands to all corners of the world. They see to it that the whole world is running as it should. The wind blows where required. The clouds take the rain to the right spots and the rains keep water to the fields and gardens. 
Then out of fire, without smoke, Allah created jinn. Some jinn are good and some are bad. Some of them are believers and some are unbelievers. Finally, Allah decided to make a human being. He collected every kind of soil. He mixed it like a potter's clay. He molded it into the shape of a man and breathed and breathed his spirit into it. He named the first man Adam. Then Allah made the first woman and named her Hawa or Eve. Allah made the world beautiful and he gave it to man to live in. It's a beautiful piece of writing and this way we need to read actually. This is called Reading with Chunks. How scintillating. Yeah. And then there are some difficult words and the Bangla meaning. I don't like it. You need to learn from the context. Can you read the quotation here? Of course. I'd love to. There, down on the previous page. Have you ever loved yourself? No? Start loving from today. This is a really nice one. We don't love ourselves, do we? We, we always try to love others. Yes, most of the time we forget, isn't it? Yeah. we Most of the time we forget me. Right? Last up a little bit. <laughs> okay. And there is uh, another quote, in fact two, on the other page. Could you read them? Teaching is more than imparting knowledge. It is inspiring change. Learning is more than absorbing facts. It is acquiring understanding. Mm. By William Arthur Word. And the last one? Asking question is the best quality of a good student. I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. But in our country, we actually don't allow our students to talk or to ask questions. It is said that the students who can ask questions are the best students. Because the questioner, they need to think and they find the questions. They are very curious. And learning actually relates to curiosity. Most certainly. Mm. I think you enjoyed this lesson, dear teachers. Please tell about this book, English for Teachers, with your colleagues. Thank you very, very much. Mm -hmm.